Hey folks, today on this video, uh, I'm gonna do a winterization on a 2020 Tiffin Allegro Red. But that's not the only point of the video. The other point of the video is to show people how to do it so they can do it for themselves. Each Class A unit is very similar. Class C is very similar, even Super C. Um, if you can follow this procedure, procedure will get it done and done the right way. Uh, just the key idea is to make sure to do, you know, if you got a dishwasher, if you have a washer, and get every line available on it. Make sure you get your outside shower to drain out your black and your gray tank. I'll be adding timestamps to this video if you want to skip ahead to any portion of it that uh, that you may be looking for. Uh, I'll have that in. Uh, this will be called the intro, so you can skip over this part if you'd like and get straight to the meat of the video. I've included in the video a few links to, on Amazon to a hose, like a hose end and a hose itself that you can make to hook directly to your water pump so you can suck uh, RV antifreeze from the jug right into your house water pump. There's a few methods to get the antifreeze into your system. You can pour the water directly into your fresh water tank um, and then use your house water pump to pump it throughout the system, which is a fine system, or you can do like we have. We have an external pump where we hook like a garden hose connector to the pump itself and we put it in your city water connection, which will get everything, including your house water pump, the way we do it. So you can do it that way also. Uh, I've seen people use like a sump pump, pour it in a bucket, use a sump pump with a water hose connector in the city water connection. And then, you know, some units have the, the hose that will actually suck out of the RV antifreeze jug itself from the factory, which is nice. Uh, and there's also a Camco kit for a, you can install a three-way valve that will let you pick where you want to pull from. You can either pull from a pickup tube like the factory installed ones, or if you select the other direction, it'll pull from your freshwater tank. I can add a link to that also but thanks again for watching if you pick up anything from the video or if you enjoy it give me a like or a subscribe and leave me a comment Most of the time, my first step is always to go to the freshwater tank drain, whether it be in the middle bay storage compartment or in the water bay like on this tipping, and I'll let the fresh water drain out while I move on to the next step. The next thing I do is I'll take the fresh water filter wrench and I'll take the fresh water filter base off or canister off and I will remove the filter and then I will set the filter down in the bay just as a reminder and uh, thread the base back on. That way it can be filled with antifreeze during the winterization process. While we're at the water bay, we'll go ahead and change this over to city water from tank fill, as well as we will go ahead and bypass our hot water heater. This one has the valve actually in the utility water bay. The next thing is, this equipment is equipped with a Truma AquaGo water heater. Um, the next thing you do is you'll pull the pressure relief valve at the top to relieve the pressure, then you'll release the quick release drain at the bottom, uh, allowing all the water to flow out of the hot water heater itself. Of course, make sure your water pump's not on, otherwise it'll be just pumping water from the fresh water tank into the uh, hot water heater. And then also go ahead and switch the hot water heater off, the power off. That way it's not able to be turned on with no on water in it. On this unit you have the accessibility to the water pump, able to remove that line right there with the bulb and actually connect a short hose that you can pull antifreeze directly from the jug by using your house water pump. I've attached a couple links that is the fitting and the hose size that you'll need to thread onto that water pump itself. You can, I think Camco, or Valterra actually makes a hose that directly fits on that. Here's a quick walk around to this Tiffin. It's a beautiful unit. We just got it in. Uh, it is for sale at SewellMotorCoach.com. The next thing is this door on this unit gives you access to the back of the refrigerator. 
this line that I have in my hand here is uh, the water supply line. You'll want to disconnect the union between the plastic line and the copper line and then at the bottom of the cabinet there'll be a turn valve that you'll turn to cut the water off. You can also turn the water pump on just for a second to make sure you push the antifreeze out through the valve before you close it. It's a good idea to check and see what your black tank, gray tank, and fresh tank water levels are. Um, this one is empty already, but if they were not, then I would go ahead and drain the gray and the black into a sewer connection. So in this unit, as you can see, there's a kitchen sink, you've got a dishwasher, and then in the front bathroom, which is the only bathroom in this unit, a his and hers vanity sink, a toilet, you've got a shower, hot and cold side, and then in the back, there's the washer. And then we've already taken care of the refrigerator. And you always want to make sure to dump the ice out and also turn off the ice maker itself by raising that little metal handle. Um, and then you also want to turn the refrigerator off by the breaker or the power button. So we'll start with the kitchen sink. It's usually the furthest away from the water bay itself. And we'll start with the cold side until we get pink and then do the hot side until we get a good solid pink also and then move on with the same order to each and every sink, vanity, um, shower or toilet also. Sometimes you'll get the aeration like that. It's really handy to have a second person, you know, outside at the suction hose making sure you've always got antifreeze being pulled through the line. Otherwise, it can be a pain to get it restarted again. Now that we've got both sides of our shower with good solid pink, we're going to move on to the vanities. We'll do hot, and then we'll move to the cold when we get good solid pink. This unit actually has both, which is pretty neat. That's not super common. Tiffin's about the only one I've seen that has the his and hers sink. For the toilets, whether it's electric or whether it's a manual toilet like this, I like to do it a few times. Make sure to get plenty down into the trap of the toilet if this one has one. And if not, then it gets plenty of antifreeze down into the black tank just to keep everything lubed up. Now for most fifth wheels and RVs, to run the washer dryer and dishwasher, you can go to the generator and start it or have it plugged up. Uh, we'll just start our generator, move back here to our dishwasher. As soon as the transfer switch kicks in, we're going to run it on as short a cycle as possible um, and let it just go all the way through unless we have a rinse and drain option, which this Furon did not have that option. Then we'll move on to the washer. On the washer, we're going to go for a quick wash if possible, as long as the water temperature is warm or able to be moved to warm. You want to be able to pull antifreeze from the warm, the hot and the cold side. That way both sides get winterized. And the ideal thing is to let it get antifreeze into the drum itself. And then you can pause the cycle and you'll see I'll move it to a rinse and drain cycle only. That way it just pumps it out. As one of my final steps, I usually take a gallon of antifreeze and I'll pour at least one cup of the RV antifreeze down each drain that way each trap gets full of the antifreeze and then i like to run the sprayer heads um, on both ways to make sure that i have antifreeze in it also it's just a safety guarantee that i don't have to replace a trap whenever we do winterize this unit shower also is very important the shower trap is one you don't want to get into and then the toilet just as a safety precaution now we're back to the washer and I'm going to move it to a drain and spin cycle just so that the antifreeze makes it through the pump that actually pumps out the water in the drum so I know that it's been winterized also. You can barely see there's a little bit of pink left in it and it just sucked it out. And then the dishwasher, you can see that it's got antifreeze in it also. Um, so from here you can hit it on a drain and spin cycle if it has it. Um, this one did not, so I had to finish the cycle. Is the only way to get it to actually remove the water through the pump itself. And the last thing you need to do is make sure to do your out, outside shower, hot and cold side. 
now that we're finished with this unit we're going to button it up put the slides in clean up our mess and take it back to the lot well, if you made it this far in the video, you must have seen something that you liked. So if you don't mind, hit that like button, subscribe. I'll have more content coming your way. I'm going to shoot for like an RV tip of the day, short, um, and try for every day, maybe every other day or something like that. So if you don't mind, I appreciate it. Thanks.